Do you have an e-bike that's maybe a little bit pokey or maybe just a little bit slow? And would you love to void your warranty? Well, today you are in luck because that is exactly what I'm gonna do on the DIU V1. I'm John Holmes with Holmes Hobbies, and today I am going to void the warranty on my DYU V1. It seems a little bit pokey on the startup, and so what I would like to do is have more torque. And amps make torque, so I know how I can add more amps into this controller. And just to give you a little preview of what happens, this is a controller from another bike that I had taken apart. We can't fit it in right now because I bent it all up, but it would be slid inside this nice fancy case to keep it tight and tucked away and clean and dry and operational of course and I took it apart and added this little bitty piece of copper is right next to what is called the shunt and the shunt resistor tells the controller via the voltage drop across the shunt how many amps are passing in the system and ideally it would be made from a material that does not change resistance as the temperature fluctuates and but we're void warranties here so I am just going to use some copper to replace or bridge over the shunt. What it does is make the resistance of the shunt lower and fools the controller into passing more amps, hopefully not smoking the controller or hurting your batteries too much or your motor, that's the risk with this. But what you will get by doing this is more torque if your system will output it. I learned on this bike, which is another DYU bike, that even with the shunt resistor, we got a little bit more acceleration, but we got no more top speed, and we really didn't get any more perceivable power other than just barely a little bit off the line. There, there seems to be something in this controller that keeps it slow at first, and then once it gets past about four miles an hour, it would actually have a little bit more torque until maybe six miles an hour, and then that point, the wind of the motor was too high and the voltage was too low to get any more power from the system. So in this case, it ended up being that, yeah, we didn't really get much from it, but I learned a lot about how the bike operates, and now I know I need to put about 72 volts on this particular bike to make it peppy. But on the DYU V1, it seems obvious to me while riding it that it has not only a lot more top speed than the other model did on 36 volts, but it seems to be amp limited extremely heavily in the controller. And so all we need to do is take this controller apart, hopefully find a shunt in there, and we will bridge over it with this copper wire. Sounds easy enough, but we'll see when we get into it. The tools that you will need is a T10. Ah, I, I, I bought a pack of security bits from Harbor Freight, and it turns out that the T10 was the one that was missing out of all of the selection that we'd had. So I went to another store, Ace Hardware, and they actually did have the T10 security. It says T10H S2, whatever that means. And uh, you know, a little pack, got all the different security sizes and all the different uh, various things that you could do that are odd. So hopefully what we're gonna be able to do is get into these security bits, which usually it's just a Phillips number two in these sorts of things but they do have T10 security bits all around. We're just gonna take that apart along with the security bit and of course the controller that you're modifying. You might need some wire snips, something to help you bend your shunt, a little piece of copper. I'm currently using 16 gauge non-coated copper wire here. Uh, we'll need a driver for our security bit and then we will also need our soldering iron. And since I am using a lead-free solder, I have it set to about 360, 370 Celsius on the temperature. We'll see how that does on this board. Sometimes you gotta turn it up. Oh, and I think I want to actually use the extension on here so that when I drop this security bit into my five-way or six-way or whatever this is, that it doesn't slide all the way down into the handle. So, you know, one more tool. But it comes with a kit, so huzzah. We start by unscrewing the screws on the case. There are four of them. And let's see, does it stay in this one? Not really, does it stay in this one? Much better, we'll use this. Normally there would be a heat spreader bar. As you can see on this controller, there's a heat spreader bar and there are three bolts or screws that go into that. This model doesn't seem to have that. Uh, so just a forewarning, if you're taking a controller apart to watch out for the screws, probably just take all of them apart. Take all of them out to be safe. Uh, usually you would have the heat spreader bolted in. Usually. This one doesn't have one. I'm kind of interested to see if they did anything on the inside of the case or maybe they just shoved the MOSFETs 
into the side of the case. Who knows? I'm very curious about this. This also may present a problem with me increasing the amps and amps not only make torque, but they make heat and they make heat by the square of the amps, which means that if I double my current, I will get double the torque, but I will get four times the controller heating on the inside uh, as far as our resistive losses are concerned. So now that we have the four bolts off the back, we're gonna take the back cover off and let's just see what's on the inside. It seems to be taped in, uh, possibly some double-sided capped on tape. So it's gonna be a little bit tough to slide this out, but I will give it a shot. Found the spot. So here is the retainer, the black part, and I actually managed to put the uh, screwdriver in, bam, and pop it out of that channel from this side. I couldn't do it from the other side. And uh, after that came out of the channel, this is now free moving. And instead of having your typical heat spreader bar that bolted into the case, they just had this piece of uh, spring steel. That's kind of neat looking. Let's see if you can get some contrast against that. This piece of spring steel was actually wedged into a channel in the case and that wedged the MOSFETs up against the side of the case. This little resistor right here is our shunt resistor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bridge some copper, some wire, uncoated, over the top of it, and that is going to reduce the resistance. Effectively, either having it, uh, it well, if we did two of these shunt resistors, it would have it. If I did something of equal value, it would have it. This is probably gonna cut it into maybe a fourth or a sixth. Although it may still be illegible, as you can see, the phone camera actually did a pretty good job of looking at it. A quick search of the internet did not reveal what these MOSFETs were. I would uh, hope that there was a little bit better etching on them to read them properly, and maybe I could bend them back and get a better view on one of them, but, eh, you know, it runs. I didn't notice anything running hot, so I am going to just stop right there, and we will find out how good the MOSFETs are the easy way, which is just overheating them with our shunt mod. Always remember your safety glasses. Be careful when you're using nippers. You don't want to shoot somebody's eye out. There's our good heat. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now that we're done soldering, we can cut this to length. Just got a little extra wire there that gave me some purchase to hold on to it by. Make sure it's not hot first. Nice and cooled down. And we should just be able to nip this off, hopefully without destroying the electronics around it. There we go. And maybe you can see on camera, the nice little bridge that mostly looks like solder at this point, which honestly, we could just bridge over this with solder, but it's a little nicer to uh, use copper. That way, uh, you know, solder will just melt and then your hard work will be gone, whereas the copper will not melt. Although if it's hot enough to melt solder, maybe the solder would still melt and you'd have problems. After you avoid a warranty is shoving everything back together and hoping that it still works. We've got this little piece of tape there. A little piece of capped on tape that's in our way. Just need to sneak around it. There we go. A little sneaky sneak. Shove this guy in. Not too far. Put this retention bar back in. We just slide this in all the way down. Just like that. Easy as pie. Just trying to pop out. Was that a good noise? I think that was a good noise. We'll just ever so gently slide the wires back. So there you go. There is the shunt mod on a speed controller. And in this case, it was the DYU V1. You can do this shunt mod to any controller. And especially if it's a non-programmable controller, you would want to do this. If you can program it, a lot of times you just program double the amperage in there and you would be doing double amperage on both phase for your torque off the line and on the battery side for your high speed. If you're here watching this, you probably want more torque. So up those phase amp limits if it is a programmable controller. 
And in this case, it was not, so we did the shunt mod. And now it is time to see if there is any more torque in there. But I do believe we have run out of time for today, so we will save that for the next video. I appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.